Hey there, welcome to the Drawing Codex. We're going to do a small drawing demo slash drawing lesson where we're going to draw a little goblin guy and we're going to talk about a number of fundamental things, mostly how to apply the foundational concepts of drawing with form, how do we apply gesture to a little cartoony character, and then how do we add details and texture and those sorts of things over the top at the end. This will be a real-time, fully narrated tutorial. It's going to be laid back. It's not going to be highly edited. Hopefully that's what you're after. This is how drawing is done. It takes time and patience. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm drawing in a sketchbook. It is this one here. It's a Strathmore 400 series sketch paper. Um, quite a big one. Again, 192 pages. And again, it's a little bit so sort of thin, but I think it does the job for this type of work, you know, where we're just kind of playing around. I've got a matte black wing that I'm going to be using for most of this. Got a two stage black wing sharpener as well that just gives this a nice sort of tapered point. And I've got a kneadable eraser that I'll be using to knock back some of the construction work that I do. But other than that, you know, I, I do have an eraser on the on the back of this. So that's what I'm using, fairly simple setup, but it does the job. And again, no matter how fancy digital technology gets, uh, good old pencil and paper is still a lot, lot better for just having fun and drawing. Just quickly, if you want to learn a little bit more about structure, specifically how to draw heads using systems like the Loomis method and how to troubleshoot your drawings if you're having trouble drawing heads, check out my free mini workshop that goes over the top five head construction mistakes that aspiring artists tend to make and how to avoid them, how to not make those mistakes and get better structure in your heads. It will be free. The link is in the description. At the Drawing Codex, what we're about is drawing cool stuff from our imagination, getting professional results or better than professional results, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. My name is Tim McBurney, and again, I'm a, a drawing teacher and a full-time professional working artist where... You know, I do this kind of stuff all the time. So the first thing that we want to sort of focus on here is the idea of gesture. And gesture, to a certain degree, for me, goes along with perspective. Again, tricky. I'm like writing at the same time as I am talking. Not a good idea. So... The idea there is that what we sort of have structurally with a little sort of character like this is, um, you know, a couple of major sort of forms, right? We've got the head, we've sort of got a torso, we're going to have some some sort of arms, and then we're going to have some some sort of legs, right? And again, it's it's a fairly sort of compact character, so. The idea of gesture and perspective sort of go together because in many ways what we're doing is we're trying to place the, the figure in some three-dimensional um, sort of situation. And again, we sort of need to think about the perspective that's going on there. So we don't just sort of think about the character as a two-dimensional set of proportions. We're thinking of them as fitting into three dimensions. So... In order to do that, what I'll do is, um, again, I'll be drawing a fairly sort of static kind of image. Um, and what I'm going to sort of focus on is getting some dimensionality there for us to play around with. So you can play around with some of these gestures and posing and postures. And I'll do a little bit of demonstration about that. But what I'm really looking for here is just the basic grid of the perspective that I'm going to be using. Now I'm doing this pretty roughly and, I, and I'm roughing this in. But this really is what we're thinking about. Now the key is that I'm, I'm thinking about the grid. I might put in maybe not quite this much of it if I'm sort of drawing normally. But as a drawing exercise, I'm going to put in, you know, a, a little bit more of it and a little bit more of the structure than I normally would when I'm drawing 
simply because when I'm drawing for myself, um, I just imagine those things, right? Um, and the more you focus on understanding the, the foundational concepts, you know, like the, the box logic, right? Understanding your basic primary forms, the more that you will be able to kind of get these things happening in your, in your head, in your imagination. So the trick there is the more of your sort of foundational principles that you learn, the less of them you actually need to apply. They, they become essentially sort of sublimated and, and automated within your sort of drawing process. But this is kind of the, the sort of angle I'm going to sort of play with, right, to, to just kind of look at how we can construct stuff and try to demonstrate a few little drawing situations. So again, I'm going to pick something fairly dimensional, right? We can sort of see the, the side of his character here. All right, we can see the front, I can see the top. This allows me to see some good dimensionality, right? And the point there is that that is a really good type of angle to practice your structural drawing. We don't want to pick something too exaggerated, but you also want to make sure you've got um, a nice sort of one, two, three read on the form, i.e. we can see the top or the bottom and the front or the back and one of the sides. So if you want to play around more with the idea of posing, what we do is we basically create our own little mannequin or puppet version um, of whatever character you're, you're drawing. So again, in this case, the character is sort of somewhat around, you know, one, two, three heads high. Got quite long arms. And again, you know, the torso is probably not going to be, you know, quite that big, but um, again, it, it sort of takes up that, that sort of space, right? So then we might have the, the hips and some sort of big, actually the eyes are more likely to be sort of down here, right? So that's the kind of, right? That's the kind of proportion that we're dealing with. And it's really just a matter of practicing. This is the number one skill that really, if you're looking at figure construction to, to practice, is just the idea of posing this kind of little stick figure. Now, there's a number of different ways you can do it. You can focus on doing it in a really sort of technical way, right? So we can do it in a technical, we can do it in a sort of, gestural way um, and uh, again you know we, we can also th there's other sort of drawing sort of styles that, that are there for massing in the the figure but again the technical way is where we really try and sort of stick with the mannequin and, and we're kind of trying to draw this mannequin in in quite a technical way so we, we're sort of really defining it and, and almost imagining like no no this is actually a mannequin and what, what we're trying to do is kind of, um, again, draw it in as much technical detail as possible, right? We're going to try and line everything up. Again, I'm just kind of just making up the, the details of this mannequin on the fly. But again, you know, you're going to try and line it all up, make sure it all works, and you're going to focus on the, the technical aspects of it. Right. The um, again, the, the less artistic, but the, the more um, foundational concepts that will teach you how to do the gestural stuff better. Now, the gestural way to do this is just to be a little bit looser, a little bit more sort of artistic. And, you know, that's where, again, what we might sort of do is is just sort of, you know, let this kind of flow a little bit more. Right. And, and this might be, you know, better for coming up with with sort of more interesting poses again these are things that you really have to practice on your own but but I think this distinction the reason I'm sort of going over this is because 
I think this distinction is really important to make that, you know, often when we're demonstrating, again, drawing technique, what we're demonstrating is more of the technical stuff because that restrains you as, um, you know, someone who's trying to learn this and makes you really focus on getting it right as opposed to sort of trying to make stuff look cool. But again, the way that we're often implementing this is a little bit more artistically, potentially a little bit more from a gestural standpoint. And what we're doing there is essentially, I'm doing as much of this as I can, but I'm focusing a little bit more on, again, just trying to get that sort of feeling um, working, right? So again, I'm not quite sure exactly how that's sort of working. But, um, you know, that's kind of what I do. And, and again, some of these will turn out better than others. And you might have to iterate because you, you're not sort of planning and, and, and trying to make everything perfect. What you're often trying to do is, is feel out a pose, right? Um, really sort of understand, again, like what's the gesture, what's happening with the movement. Now, what we can obviously do is after we've done our gesture, when you first start doing gestures and little sort of sketches, they won't be as accurate because even though you might practice the technical sort of posing, when you sort of let your pencil fly a little bit more, you're going to make mistakes. The, the artistic or the emotional strokes are maybe going to win out. And that's a good thing. But it does mean that in the beginning, your more gestural artistic sketches and posing are going to be, yeah, a little bit off. But that's okay because what we can do is we can actually sort of overlay a structural layer on top of that and kind of true this up. But this is, you know, the first step, right, that we're going to deal with. And, and that is just sort of finding basically uh, an angle to draw the character with. Now, I'm going to pick a fairly static sort of uh, pose, you know, not something too dynamic. But um, again, we'll sort of see how we go. All right. So let's, um, again, what I'll try and do is I'll try and find a gesture or a, a kind of pose for the character and, and we'll sort of see how we go. Again, I, I, I want to do something that's kind of, um, you know, like a, a little bit, a little bit interesting, um, but again, not, not too sort of crazy with the, with the pose. So let's try and feel this out. Again, what you, what I often find is that, you know, most, most of the time what we need for, you know, doing our, our sort of drawing is just a few very faint marks. You, you kind of can establish a grid just by putting, you know, essentially, you know, a, a cross on the ground. That'll kind of set most of your perspective. Within that now, I, I've, I, I'm sort of starting to visualize the space. And again, we visualize it as if there are sort of boxes and, and structure, right? As if there is sort of a grid there. But again, I'm not often drawing it in. Mostly I'm just sort of drawing in like a, a little small grid. So again, um, you know, I'm going to try and place the character. Maybe we'll sort of go a little bit, a little bit higher, make this character a little bit bigger. All right. So again, we can rough in proportion, right? I, I can sort of say, well, yeah, there's probably going to be like a, um, you know, like a, a sort of a head here. Um, I'm going to have sort of that sort of chest there, right? We've got the Right, and I'm doing this again um, as an overlay. So we'll start with sort of something that's more gestural. Um, and because I want, I want to have a little bit more emotion to the character. Right, so we we'll start trying to block in the right where these legs are just with simple stick figure but i'm paying attention to where that sort of ground plane is and that's going to just let me kind of understand roughly where where that character is going to be sitting and where the character is sort of contacting the ground there again where they contact the ground is is sort of pretty important. Now again, depending on how comfortable you are sort of mixing up, you know, putting in some of the costume and, and some of those things there, again, you can sort of include that as you wish with the um, 
sort of gestural sketch here. And again, as I said, you know, as if you're sort of starting out, right, your gestural sort of sketching is going to be a lot less accurate, right? But but that's totally fine. You know, that's that's sort of par for the course. That's normal. That's um that's totally totally fine. You can just do subsequent overlays, right? Um, and and sort of progressively true up that that character. So again, trying to think about where that cylinder of the belt is. All right, what's happening there? Again, I'm adding a little bit more structure and draw through than I normally would. I've got a knee here, right? And I've sort of got a knee here. We're going to have his kind of like uh, like glutes and stuff have got to sort of be somewhere somewhere over here. But essentially, he's going to have kind of like slightly sort of baggy pants there. So again, normally when I'm sort of doing this, what I'll what I'll frequently do is 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 really kind of make sure I'm getting over the page, right? Um, and and make sure I'm sort of looking directly down at it because this is going to allow me to to see exactly what's happening with that structure a little bit better. Um, I often see this as this is one of the biggest sort of challenges you you kind of face when you're sort of drawing um, and recording it is it's it's generally quite tricky to make sure you're you're looking directly at it at the page because the more directly I am at looking across like at the page the more my head is basically in front of the camera so but as a general rule this is something that's super super important for you to um, remember is that you you always want to make sure that you're viewing the sort of the thing that you're creating from the right angle where there's not a lot of distortion. So where there's distortion is essentially, you know, I, I'm looking at this across the page. Um, and that's why a lot of drawing desks are tilted. So if you've got a, you know, hardbound sketchbook like this, again, you can kind of tilt it up. Um, or you can just have a, like a drawing um, sort of uh, board or something like that that you can kind of tilt up and, and look at from from the right angle every now and then. Um, but yeah, that is something that I always consciously do. And you know, when I was beginning and sort of starting out, I did not consciously do it. And you know, my drawing suffered, right? It's legitimately a really, really important part of the process. So one of the things that's happening here is I'm transitioning from sort of the first stage to the second stage and the first stage here would be um, essentially sort of gesture and the second stage would be form or structure so again the these things sort of flow into each other for sure and it's not doesn't nothing has to be a, a complete sort of linear um, process, you know, where you know you sort of start and finish, and and that's kind of the end of it. Um, you know, we, we're always kind of thinking about gesture and structure and those sort of things that, you know, at, at the same time. But um, most of the again the the movement and that sort of gesture has been essentially completed at this point. So he's kind of got a little sort of fist there. And he's got sort of one here, and this one is holding a kind of hammer of some kind. And what we'll do is we'll try and add a bit of sort of structure to that hammer. Again, get our ellipse sort of logic um, happening. Again, we've got our, um, I, I made a video recently that you can check in the channel about mastering uh, cylinders and ellipses and here you can see again what I'm going to do is I've got my minor axis that I'm drawing sort of through and then I'm drawing a series of ellipses basically going and lining up with that. We can do the same here with this sort of handle of the axe or whatever again 
I'm not treating them as a circular ellipse, but I am sort of tracing that center line that sort of is going to join them up, right? And I'm thinking about the form that goes there. So again, we're getting pretty rough here. That's, um, that's kind of okay, because what I'll have to do is probably, again, use a bit of an eraser, get, get some uh, get some of this graphite off the page and once I've done that I can then go in there and you know figure out some of these details uh, a little bit more so let's take a look at some of this other sort of structure he's got like a tail and we want that tail again if I sort of imagine where the tail is uh, behind him again sort of you know near his glutes and I can sort of draw through um, and again, sort of draw through there. It's going to be in a, in a pretty sort of similar spot to where I drew it in the first place, but yeah, just making sure again, double checking and then thinking about where's the center, right? If we sort of drop a line down for his main body mass and we think about where is like the center between these two feet that we've got. Right, let's think about where, you know, if there was a shadow on the ground for that um, tail, right? Where would it be? Somewhere around there. Something like that, maybe. Again, that sort of stuff helps. And we might have, again, some sort of flap at the back that kind of covers, covers the tail a bit. All right, so again, getting there. Here we've got, okay, let's, let's make sure those fingers are right. All right, I'm gonna give him three fingers. Even though this hand isn't really doing anything. Again, this arm feels quite sort of big to me, not not entirely convinced about um, about that yet, we'll see. Mostly because this one looks a little bit, a little bit smaller. So what I might do again is kind of just, we can sort of think about getting rid of some of that, right? Like it's, it's almost like, again, if we were to draw through, this arm is kind of like a little bit behind his torso now. So next step is to think about his head, right? So here I've got like quite a few different lines there. Let's um, clarify that a little bit. Um, so here I've got the main sort of gist of his head. This is going to be the center line, right? If we were to sort of carve off the side here, like our sort of typical Loomis method, that's sort of what we would have. If we were to draw some lines kind of through, right? to get some sort of extra structure there. That's sort of what we'd be looking at. Um, again, I'm going to sort of put the nose on as, uh, as a little sort of decal, imagining where it would sort of connect to the face. And once I'm done with that, then we can, you know, add some extra sort of structure to it. Put in that kind of nostril, right? Now let's sort of think about and draw through that sort of line of the eyes. Right. So again, we're probably not going to see this line of the eye over there. And the idea is I want his sort of mouth to be open. So here we're going to sort of think about, let's draw through. Let's think about where the teeth are right under that sort of nose, going to have some sort of teeth here, right, teeth sort of going back, again, super useful, probably should do a video on how to draw teeth at some point, but again, what we can do is we can use some of that sort of structure, right, to make sure that we're staying true, right, thinking about, essentially, this is like a horseshoe shape, that's going to have like another horseshoe shape to it. So then 
I'm just going to sort of create an arc a little bit more down here. Um, and then we'll kind of move it in a little bit. So again, think about where that, that sort of second horseshoe shape is. And then you can draw drawing with these perspective lines. Find where that other tooth is going to be over there. Then we've got a little tongue in the middle. And all right, so that's basically the sort of structure that, that we would kind of have there. But next we need to kind of think about where the rest of this stuff goes. So again, can you know redo that a bit? That's that's all getting a little bit sort of sketchy, but that's okay. Again, you know the, the whole thing's pretty cartoony, so that's that's kind of okay. Uh, again, not sure about not sure about the eye, and again, not sure about you know how much right how much neck we're gonna we're gonna have here. Getting, he's sort of getting a very round head. Let's put in some hair. Got the ear. Think about adding a few little details there. And yeah, there we go. So again, that's like you know the the, the rough idea that that, that we've got. Um, again, I'm sort of thinking about form, but you know we, we're not really thinking about detail. But detail is what we will be dealing with next. So stage three is. detail. And this is where probably what we do is we sharpen our pencil a bit <laughs> and we will take the structure that we've done. So we've sort of basically overlaid some structure and form over the top of the gesture and now we're just going to overlay some detail on top of on top of that. And again the process I use for this is, is sort of fairly simple. I, I use this very similar process if I'm, um, you know, I, this is basically what I always do. I just kind of use the kneadable eraser and I just take some of that graphite off, right? We sort of knock it back. Now, this is where this sort of sketch paper or a lower quality paper is potentially going to start to cause you problems. If, if you really start hacking up, um, you know, the page too much, uh, you know, these things are not very forgiving. And, you know, you I, I won't have many sort of goes at it. I mean, you can sort of see that, you know, I, I was trying to sort of erase the eye and you can see that, yeah, I mean, th th there's really only, there's a certain limit to which it's just not not really interested in, uh, in erasing anymore. So you do have to be careful. Um, a really, really good, high quality, 100% cotton paper. Um, we'll, we'll, you know, you, you will just be able to erase and erase and erase and erase and erase and erase forever, basically. Um, and you know it, it'll just keep keep coming up fine so again what what we're trying to do here is is think about what is the the kind of final layer right the final layer of structure now as i said you know this is sketch paper right you know we we're not going to get that kind of crazy or you know um, detailed or anything like that because we can't, right? You know, we, I can't sort of overwork this too much, right? It, if if we work this too much, it's it's just going to end up, yeah, being a complete sort of mess. So we'll see how we go. 
but here okay, just want to think about how that sort of skin is wrapping around and this is where you know looking at some uh, reference for you know animals that that have you know similar sort of tooth structure to what you're what you're kind of after um, can be really handy uh, or just you know sort of human human anatomy here we're going to have this tongue so again we're imagining that the right that mouth kind of comes over there and let's make sure we you know, draw that tooth there. We've got a few more teeth again sort of wrapping around here. So I'm kind of imagining some of the structure that was kind of created um, earlier, right? I sort of did this and I've sort of got it in there and, and I'm sort of imagining some of that there. And what I'm going to do is kind of just fill in some of these shadows here. It, it's important to note that I, that I'm not like just, you know, I'm not going through and you know shading everything sort of in in a, in a hyper analytical way, right? I'm suggesting a little bit more, right? And I, and I'm being subtle with the way that I apply the pencil, so you know it, it's not a, it's you have to be really careful when when you're dealing with sort of paper um, to think about again, you know, how do I how do I get that sort of feeling of detail in there? without um, going overboard. And that's where, again, so much of the subtlety of, of you applying this kind of detail stage is, is going to lie. Uh, a, a lot of it is kind of just basic. Um, how much do you, how much do you suggest versus how much do you, do you kind of show And uh, yeah, you know, I, I, don't, I don't often have a huge plan, you know, when I'm sort of dealing with this kind of stuff. Um, you know, I'm just playing around with, with pencil, seeing, seeing what it does. Um. Okay, maybe that thing can be a little bit over there. Maybe this ear. Right, can come a little bit back. So it's always tricky because, you know, I'm not dealing with a very structural style here. Um, you know, I'm dealing with a very sort of cartoony style and, and it's a mix of sort of two-dimensional things and it's it's a mix of, uh, of three-dimensional things. So, yeah, this is where, again, when you're really thinking about, you know, the detail and, and adding this stuff, you, you, you have to be, you have to sort of, remove yourself a little bit from the form stuff right and try and sort of show the form as as much as possible but again i think in the reality uh, what a lot of people are sort of doing is some um, yeah kind of just sort of doing whatever looks cool right uh, at, the, at the end of the day that's kind of mostly um what's happening because uh, again you know you can't always do all the detail you you've you've got to suggest some of the detail um we it, it just rarely sort of looks right to kind of go in and add all of the you know every single little bit of every single thing and, and you're always limited by how much um you know how much pencil width do you have you know like how much can we actually feasibly do um, you know, I can sort of try and add some other, you know, little bits and pieces. But uh, again, you know, it's like, is, is that what I want to do from a stylistic point of view? Uh, probably not really. Don't, don't want to add heaps of kind of stuff. And yeah, at some point you kind of run out of pencil. You know, it's like I can't make a, a mark that's, you know, bigger or smaller or whatever than, you know, a particular a particular size with a with a given kind of pencil, so you've kind of got to make a make a decision. 
Um, is this something that we're going to actually sort of draw out? Or is this something that, you know, we're going to suggest? So again, you know, here, there's a good little situation. I, I'm not going to sort of draw, right, all of that sort of detail there. I'm sort of suggesting it here, and I'm putting in a little sort of indication that, you know, there's a, there's a sort of a shadow there, and that, that will sort of be enough. In, in the same way, again, you know, in some of these places, I'm putting little marks to kind of anchor the, right, anchor that form. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going through and, and drawing it all. Um, and by drawing it all, you know, I just mean that, you, you know, I, I'm not sort of putting shading under everything. I'm being selective with it. And that's just, again, part of thinking about detail. This is where you look at what other people are doing, you experiment, play around. This is often where, you know, a lot of sort of quote unquote style will come from is figuring out kind of how to solve those problems relating to do I suggest, do I draw it, how do I represent that texture with my, you know, with my sort of given tool. Um, you know, do I do I go through and, you know, properly properly add it, you know, or do I just do a little sort of mark? You you develop little solutions to those problems as you go. And yeah, again, in, in many cases that is sort of what is gonna define and make up your personal little style, right? How much texture is there? How much uh, you know of this is there, etc. So again, you know, I'm not I'm gonna suggest these you know what's happening with the feet a little bit. Um, we can do that with pencil. If I was doing this as a you know a, a finished sort of line drawing, um, you know I'd probably have to go in there and sort of define some of those things. But when we got pencil, um, you know again this is the tool in front of me. This is how I'm using it. Always good to kind of think about what the tool in front of you does well and what it doesn't do well, and to plan and react accordingly. few little bumps on there maybe a few little bumps on here as well and yeah that's kind of you know that's kind of that bit done again I can kind of indicate some of that shadow all right again he's gonna have some sort of shadow there as well and what do we got here what did I end up drawing so when it comes to, to adding detail, again, you know, you this is it's kind of a little bit similar to inking or, or, or adding sort of finished lines. A, a good rule of thumb is that you know if you sort of start with the stuff that's in the foreground, right, or in 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 the front, that will be a, a really good um, you know place to start, basically. And that just means that you know here. Yeah, if I kind of do this, um, I'm going to do that one first because I kind of know that's in front. Here again, I've sort of got this kind of cylinder here. I'm going to sort of change the the generalized form that I was sort of drawing. All right, I've got this thing here. So again, I'm. The other thing that you you sort of work on when it comes to detail is just managing the, the pencil tip. Now, again, if you if you just work with a mechanical pencil, this is a lot sort of easier uh, to manage. Again, I don't think I've got one super handy, but one of the things you kind of learn to do again is to kind of ro keep rotating the pencil and kind of realize, again, you know, if I if I, I was sort of here, right, and and that's sort of creating quite a we sort of rotate it around. I've got that sort of big flat sort of edge to it, and that's going to give me a nice sort of big stroke. But again, what I want to do is get quite a. I want to get a more sharp edge for underneath there. So what I'm going to do is turn the pencil, right, and that's going to give me a, a thinner sort of sharper edge. And one of the reasons I want that sharper edge is again so I can add a few little kind of notches and. Again, that's uh, honestly that's the sort of thing that I've been getting better at that over the last few years. Because for for the longest time, I just used mechanical pencils. 
Um, but these Blackwing pencils are just kind of pretty cool to uh, play with and they're much better for doing drawing demos because they're really dark. So anyway, that's sort of what we've got here. Maybe, you know, if, if I was to kind of draw out a long sort of blade, a long sort of axe handle there, that would go back there. Probably just going to end up being a little bit confusing. Now, let's look at kind of where that this axe handle is, is almost basically sort of touching the ground here. You might have a little bit more of a shadow from this. Again, might have a bit more sort of shadow over there. Again, uh, it's always fun to kind of indicate a little sort of ground plane or something like that. But um, you know, that's uh, that's kind of looking that's kind of looking like it's it's kind of finished to me. Again, hard to know um, you know what else we can do if it's if it's just kind of a a little sketch. Um, again, just playing around. You know, I'm just having fun drawing. This is kind of literally the, the the level of of sketch and you know the the amount of kind of detail i would i would kind of put in you know if i'm just kind of doing it myself in in my sketchbook it's not something that i would you know consider professional work or plan drawing you know uh, again a lot of these stylistic affectations and texture and those kind of bits and pieces are not things that i would typically do in in my sort of normal sort of style or work but again that's what a sketchbook is for right just playing around seeing seeing what seeing what works seeing you know if you can experiment um, and uh, yeah you know just looking at what the what the actual you know medium you're working within does so anyway that's basically it we sort of talked a little bit about sort of gesture form and detail just did a little demo to kind of you know show some of that stuff um, you know, in action, and yeah, that's kind of uh, that's that's the important stuff. You want to start with and, and practice the idea of figuring out a, a mannequin so that you can pose your character. Again, try and think about or even put in or indicate the structure that you see surrounding it at all times. As you get more advanced, you will find that you don't need to do that as much. The other thing is that when you're posing, if you are trying to draw dimensionally, pose dimensionally. Make sure you've got a good one, two, three read. That will always really, really help. And just understand, again, the interplay between being technical with our structure and also the need to add gesture and feeling and emotion and, and, and that sort of artistic sense to the way that we actually build up a drawing. So keep in mind, again, I've been doing this for quite some time. So my sort of gestural drawings have probably a lot of inherent structure to them. When I started out, they didn't. You know, I do these gestural drawings and they would kind of have a lot of feeling, but they wouldn't be technically good, you know, so they would, wouldn't feel as if they're standing on the ground. And I'd have to do sort of a, a lot of put, kind of passes, sort of really sitting there figuring out like, okay, what's going on, right? What's happening? But the key is to, again, get a gesture, get a posture that, you know, is working from perspective and, you know, just general sort of angle wise. Then what we need to do is start adding that form. This is where, again, you know, we sort of break down the, the primary forms that we're sort of drawing. You know, think about your basic sort of cylindrical objects there, right? And think about how they... Uh, positioned. Again, I'm not focusing too much on that in this uh, demo. Uh, you know, I'm sort of glossing over that a little bit. But yeah, you know, that's the that's the basic progression. And then the next thing is to think about how to add detail, right? How to actually, um, you know, take that and put something into it. And and again, a lot of that is experimentation. I I, I feel like you can. There's certainly a lot of things you can do to to, to play around with that, but. You know, at, at, it, at its core, a, a lot of that is sort of you responding to the materials that you've got in front of you and, you know, just kind of seeing how you can get things to feel a particular way. But the things that are probably really worth looking at there are the idea of sort of suggestion. Right. Versus drawing at all. 
And again, just just the main sort of idea that you don't you don't always need to draw everything. You need to sort of uh, listen. Listen to the medium and essentially just kind of like see what the tool that you've got in front of you is, is sort of doing, what it's doing well, how it's good at kind of suggesting things. Again, one of the things with pencil is it's very forgiving. You know, you can have these kind of like vague vagaries, right, where, you know, we don't really kind of like figure out what's going on. Uh, if you're inking or doing, you know, finished lines, that becomes a little bit more tricky or... Another way to put it is that you often actually need to figure out how that medium is good at hiding detail um, or, or kind of like, you know, softening things. And often the way that that happens is just through blacking it out, right? So in that case, probably we'd, um, you know, we'd sort of black all of this out and, you know, get rid of it. But anyway, that's the, uh, that's the demo we've got for today. Hopefully this has been interesting. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see any other subjects or if this was helpful. I'd be really keen to hear your thoughts on this. But uh, other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.